Hey guys, got myself some electroluminescent wire here. About three dollars or so. Sixty centimeters, two pieces, and it's pink. But the cool thing is, it's sound reactive. So I thought it'd be interesting to see how it works. Let's tear it apart and see what's inside. So this is what we get in the box. Got a little packet of sticky stuff and whatnot, just to stick the electroluminescent wire around the place. Here's our cigarette lighter plug. It's going to be just passed through for twelve volts into our control box. Nice and shiny. This has uh, got a switch on the side for off, constant on, and then sound reactive. And uh, this here is our volume control, or how sensitive it is to uh, the sound. Then down the bottom, if we got it on constant, this is our dimmer. This one here only works when it's on constant, and this one only works when it's on sound reactive mode. Then after that, it comes out to our two little inverter boxes, and then to our electroluminescent wire. And this stuff is, uh, it looks flat, but it's actually the wire is along one side and then you can push this flap into a like a seam in your interior panels and it'll just follow along you know like along the, the the crack or the the gap between the panels that way it's easy to install so let's get some power onto this and we'll see how it works so I've got 12 volts here and I will turn out the lights and we should be able to see it reacting to my voice that's pretty cool so I can turn the you know turn the sensitivity up and down and then it flashes more and less so you can you know if you got a loud stereo you can turn it down or if you want it to react with a small talking voice then yeah you just adjust it and of course if we flick it here it's constant on and I can turn it up and down so yeah works quite well so let's uh, go ahead and see how this thing works but actually first of all I've got some other electroluminescent wire which I might try in this and um, it looks like it's got the same plug the stuff, other stuff I've got is red and here we go a bunch of red stuff so let's see if it's gonna fit looks like oh yeah there we go cool so I can use my red stuff awesome it's working quite well sweet all right let's pull this thing apart we'll start with the uh, the sound reactive module see how this thing works and then we'll move on to one of the inverters and we'll see what the little circuit in there is like and this is what we got inside our control box I'm not gonna bother uh, reverse engineering this it's double-sided and service mounts gonna be a pain in the bum but I'll talk about basically what's on here We've got our microphone here doing the sensing, a little electric microphone. Big pot there, that, that's doing all the uh, sensitivity control. Power and function switch on the side. Then here we've got the uh, dimmer sliding potentiometer. Little LED for the power indication and these capacitors are going to be for the, uh, the op amp doing the filtering of the audio. And a few other caps, just yeah, uh, electro, electrolytics there. On the back we've got an LM317, that's our voltage regulator providing the voltage for the circuit we've got two little black dots there they're the output transistors that's what's actually turning the the output on and off to the to our inverters these things and then this one here that's a JRC brand a Japanese semiconductor company and it's a 4558D um, just a dual op amp kind of like a, a TL082 or something that's that's what's doing all of the switching from here, from the audio, turning into an on and off pulse to these transistors here. And the rest of it's just passives and you know filter stuff and all the support circuitry there. And here's our inverter. So we've got a transistor, which has got some caps and resistors for a, a little oscillator circuit, which is going to be pulsing the voltage input into the transformer, which is going to step that voltage up and kick it out of here with a little, just a little capacitor on the output and a reverse bias died there so I'll draw this up and uh, we'll see how it works on the schematic so here's the schematic of our inverter we've got the input voltage coming in here 12 volts or whatever it is comes in and is applied to our uh, transistor here now that voltage isn't going to get through until we turn the transistor on by applying a voltage to the base and to start the, the uh, circuit we've got this little bootstrap capacitor here as that charges up, it allows some voltage through, which turns on the base of the uh, 
the transistor and allows the current to flow through to our primary and then out through to the ground through this reverse bias diode. Once that's started, that little bit charges up and allows this to flow through. That's then fully charged and it basically doesn't do anything anymore. What's happening is as this charges up and basically creates a pulse in the transformer, this feedback here, this is a feedback winding, this gives an output and along with the uh, capacitor here and this winding, that forms an LC network. It's tied back in and it's tied in over here. So through this current limiting resistor, that's going to allow the transistor to turn on and off at a frequency determined by the, uh, the RC, the tuned like parameters of this little network. We've got a, another current limiting resistor here, and this one here is just to limit current to the base so we don't blow the transistor. So when this is turning on and off at whatever frequency it is, this is pulsing, and obviously we've got a lot more windings here on our secondary. That's coming around and down and through. So we're going to get a higher voltage coming out of here into our EL wire. The other side of the air wire comes out here, down to ground, so that's a positive and negative pulse DC It's what's coming out. It's going to be pretty dirty, but it doesn't really matter. Air wire doesn't care. And we've got a little uh, high frequency bypass kind of coupling capacitor across the air wire just here. So that's how it works. Voltage in, got a network here going on, pulsing the transistor at a high frequency, which is determined by the frequency of these two stepped up through the transformer and out to our ear wire and then all goes down to ground over here. So now that we know how the inverter works, how does the electroluminescent wire itself work? How is it put together? Well, the construction is basically just a capacitor. What we've got is a central conductor, copper conductor, and around that we have our phosphor. Then around the phosphor We've got a protective sleeve just to keep the phosphor nice and dry and sealed in there. And then we have a coloured sleeve around that. That's what gives it whatever colour we want. And just protects it. Yeah, this big tab on the side here, that's part of the outer sleeve here, the pink colour and whatnot. So we have a copper wire. Then we have our phosphor. Then a uh, protective sleeve. And then our coloured sleeve. Then we got one wire here. We need another one because it basically acts as a capacitor. So what they do is they spiral a copper wire around the outside. So we connect to here and we connect to here and that spiraled copper creates like I said a capacitor with the uh, inner copper wire and the dielectric is the, uh, the phosphor. So as we're putting our AC signal in around about a hundred and something volts 90 to 120 volts at about a thousand Hertz uh, as a, this Capacitor, which is about one nanofarad per foot, I believe, round about that sort of uh, that sort of value. As it charges and discharges, it excites a phosphor and emits light. Okay, guys. So that's a basic rundown of how this electroluminescent wire stuff works. Little control box here, inverter, and EL wire. All right, guys. Hope you enjoyed that, and we'll see you next time.